I wanted to talk really quickly about a couple of things with this model. We modeled this in the last tutorial and we used the direct polygon modeling approach, which can be superior in some situations to a subdivided model. I've actually got a subdivided version of this model here. And it's great because it's a simple cage, it's easier to work with. And this was actually kind of a point slash criticism that some people made saying, hey, uh, working with dense polygon meshes are hard to adjust and whatever. So yes, that can be the case in some situations. But in this case, this particular model has a feature that the Catmull Clark subdivision routine actually struggles a little bit with, and it is this pole. So when you have a bunch of polygons that converge on a single point, that's called a pole. And these are triangles, and the subdivision mechanism actually has a little bit of a difficult time with that. And when we manually model it, well, we don't have those issues because the shading is being computed off the direct polygons that we've modeled to the exact topology that we want. So let's take a look at this. So what I have here is a rendering of the faceplate that uses the subdivision mechanism. And if we look carefully down here, do you see this area right here? So this is the subdivided topology that's creating these artifacts of the uh, polygons coming to that point. There is actually a variant of the subdivision routine that takes triangles into account to produce a little bit better topology than this. Blender doesn't use that variant. So let's take a look at this with the direct polygon modeling approach. And you can see we don't have those artifacts right there. So there may be a situation where direct polygon modeling may be superior to what you're doing with subdivision. Another comment that I got was about this bump area. And they said, hey, there's a better way that you could have done it. Anytime you're modeling something, there are usually multiple ways to achieve something. So I used a method where I created a curve and then showed you how you could integrate a curve into a polygon mesh. But let's just go ahead and delete these. So we'll delete these. And the other way doesn't require a curve, but you just select these two loops, do a bridge edge loop, and then we come over and we do a loop cut right in the middle. And then we pull this out. In fact, I could follow the same topology that I had set with these points that I used to generate my NURBS curve from. And then we just come over and we do a bevel with the 0.5 modifier like that. So, ta-da! So there is definitely multiple ways to achieve something, right? So that's another way that I could have done that. And then we would just find the center point, marquee across those, and use our method for generating these. And there you go. So there are usually multiple ways to achieve something. My point is not to try and show you that the way that I'm doing it is the only one and right way of doing it. It's about showing you how to do polygon modeling and use the tools and to help you think about various ways of approaching a model. So anyway, hope you found this to be useful.